37 year old Jackie Chino Mwezi was widowed five years ago. Within the space of five years, three of her five children aged less than five have died. But that was not all the bad news in store for her. For a visit to a clinic after constant attacks of sicknesses proved what she had already suspected. She was HIV positive. Acceptance was easy for Jackie and she immediately started treatment. However, she soon was in a relationship again. They used condoms to avoid infection, but the man's need to have a baby meant that they eventually had unprotected sex. He told me I'm his only love and he needed a baby. I consulted the doctors. They checked both of us and gave us the go-ahead. We took a blood sample for CD4 and the CD4 was raw. We enrolled her into a clinic. She started on treatment. Conception occurred. With this, a process of ensuring that the baby to be birthed was to be protected from contracting the virus had to begin. Even then, we can still prevent infection. We can start the mother on therapy, on treatment for ARVs, to reduce the viral load. We also continue educating her on not picking a new infection in pregnancy. But this is not the end. The baby has got to be delivered, and this is where most of the risk is. The expected date of delivery is here. Jacqueline is about to give birth. The midwives are taking utmost care to ensure that when she delivers, her baby is safe. After delivering, we shall provide for a baby nevirapine syrup. If the baby is negative, that's where if it's positive, we start the baby also on at what drugs. For the negative babies, the rate of exposure is very high in their first two years. We call these the HIV exposed infants or babies. These babies are supposed to get drugs. So the biggest challenge we have is reaching the mothers that are HIV infected with the drugs, but also reaching the babies that are born to these mothers with the efficacious drugs. Of worry is the question of breastfeeding by HIV infected mothers. One in three babies get infected during breastfeeding. God made it such a way that breast milk uh, is very natural and does not injure the baby's uh, gut. When mothers introduce artificial feeds, because the body is not adjusted to these feeds, you get some injury. So if that milk, artificial milk, injures the gut, and the child also breastfeeds, breast milk which may have HIV, the child gets infected. You should be given information and you make a decision whether you'll breastfeed this child exclusively or whether you'll give substitutes exclusively. The fight is on, but there are deterrent factors. Whereas mothers come to us in antenatal, and I must say, they tend to come once and then they come very late. When we have seen them in antenatal, a half of them don't deliver with us. They lack support from the, what, the husbands. They don't, they don't escort them to the health facility. And men, they refuse to test for HIV. According to the Minister of Health, the best option for prevention of mother-to-child transmissions is having an HIV-free mother, and this calls for reducing HIV infections amongst women of childbearing age. This coupled with avoiding unnecessary pregnancies. Many people in Uganda want to use contraceptives, but the unmet need for family planning is high, currently at 41%, one of the highest in the world. Without such an intervention, HIV-positive mothers will continue to get pregnant and the risk of their babies will stay high, breeding a future of HIV-infected people. Florence Nalimba, NTV.